incline to bypass the valve fold. Insert the tip another half a millimeter into the median oviduct. When properly positioned, the tip will easily slip past the valve fold without movement of the surrounding tissue. In this diagram, the zigzag movement of the tip is shown bypassing the valve fold. As you can see, this procedure necessitates precision and requires practice for successful insemination. Now that we've taken a look at the diagram, we're going to move to the microscope. The tip is used to bypass the valve fold, bring this straight down, staying close to the sting. You're going to go about a half a millimeter deep, lift up slightly, and go another half a millimeter. And use the saline solution to test if you're in the right location. If the semen, if the saline goes in, then we're going to continue on and deliver the semen. Here you can see the semen going into the queen. We give her about eight microliters. You want to back off slightly. This will cause the tip to come out very nice and clean. And the insemination is complete. Now that we've successful inseminated queen, let's look at some troubleshooting problems. If a significant amount of semen leaks out, it indicates the valve fold has not, has not been bypassed. For example, if you come in too close to that V, you're going to sit on top of the valve fold and you'll see the tissue move with the syringe tip. This indicates the tip is not in the pr correct location. You want to back that off, stay close to the sting hook, and come down behind it, lift up slightly and go a little bit deeper for a successful insemination. If you come in too high, you're going to sit on top of that valve fold again. And what's going to happen is, is the semen's going to back up, as you can see here. Obviously, that's not going to be correct. Now, if this happens, here's what you're going to have to do. You want to remove the syringe tip. Look at your alignment. Is the queen straight in or the hooks pulled too far to one side or the other? Have you come down too high on that V? You're going to just reposition, reposition your hooks, reposition your alignment, and try the insemination again. The tip is used to bypass the valve fold. You want to keep this close to the sting hook side. Come down straight. It's kind of a zigzag motion. Come down straight. This bypasses the valve fold. And the saline in the tip is used to test the position of the insemination, the, the tip, and the semen is inserted. We're going to give the queen eight microliters of semen. This is a full semen dosage necessary for protective queen. Going to release the pressure a little bit, pull that tip straight back out, and the insemination is complete. During insemination, observe these points carefully. Adjust the CO2 rate to a bubble per second. Maintain the correct angle of the instrument. Lift the sting, avoiding pressure on the poison sac. Position the tip above and to the right of the V. Use a zigzag movement to bypass the valve fold. Proceed the insemination with a drop of saline. And be sure to measure the semen dosage given. Eight microliters per queen is standard. To release the queen, you're going to push the hooks in and up and the queen can be removed from the insemination instrument. Clip and mark her. Queen is clipped. We're going to put a number tag on her. This will let us identify the background of the queen. Now we're going to return the queen to her cage and put her back in a hive. The carbon dioxide used to anesthetize the queen during the procedure is also important to stimulate oviposition or egg laying. Two treatments are required. One treatment is given during the procedure and the second treatment can be given either before or after insemination. For the second treatment, queens can simply be placed in a plastic bag or container filled with carbon dioxide. One of the advantages of a large capacity syringe is the ability to store semen. Here I have a tube of semen in which it's been sealed with petrolatum. There's a petrolatum plug 
at either end of the tube. To use this, we're going to reattach it to the syringe. The syringe has been filled with saline solution. Attach the capillary tube. Now you want to push out the plug on the other end, because this will plug the tip. Now we're going to give ourselves a little air space and also pick up a little bit of saline solution and then reattach the tip. And the tip is now reattached to the syringe. And it's ready for use. Push the semen down. Collect a little bit of saline solution to precede the first insemination. And you're ready for insemination. When working with stored semen, remember to Maintain sanitary conditions to avoid contamination. Seal the capillary tube at both ends with no air space. And most importantly, store the semen at room temperature. Never refrigerate this. Semen can be stored with good success for about 10 days. Avoid sunlight and temperature extremes. To see how successful your insemination was, a simple hand dissection of the spermatheca is useful. Unfortunately, you have to sacrifice the queen for this. Crush the thorax of the queen, grab the last two segments of the queen's abdomen and pull. Embedded in here is a round spherical structure. This is the spermatheca. It looks kind of white and rough. Surrounding it is a tracheal net. You want to roll this gently in your fingers to remove the tracheal net. And as you can see here, the spermatheca is crystal clear, indicating this queen has not been inseminated. We'll take a closer look under the microscope. You see, the spermatheca has no color. It's crystal clear. Let's take a look at another queen. This queen has been successfully inseminated. Again, we're going to pull the last two segments of the abdomen. With your fingernail, pull out that spermatheca. You're going to roll it in your fingers to remove that tracheal net. And as you can see, this has a lot of color to it. It's the color of semen. Take a closer look under the microscope. Here you can see the color from the creamy marbled color. You can see the difference between this one and the virgin. In checking the spermatheca, be sure to allow 48 hours for the sperm to migrate into the spermatheca before dissection. And remember to remove the tracheal net. Although having to sacrifice the queen, this is a simple yet conclusive test to establish your technique. To gain proficiency in the art of instrumental insemination requires practice and attention to detail. The first attempts may seem awkward and frustrating. Concentrate your efforts on learning each step of the technique it is also important to establish a routine to maintain highly sanitary conditions. Practice is essential. With experience, you will increase your success and efficiency. Instrumentally inseminated queens are capable of heading productive, income-producing colonies. To effectively evaluate these queens in the field, it is essential to allow them to build up strong, productive colonies. This technique has proven to be a valuable tool for the study of honeybee genetics in the scientific community. It is also a valuable tool for the development and maintenance of selected breeding stock for commercial use. Its value to benefit the beekeeping industry will be realized in the establishment of viable breeding programs.